I'm Maya Lockett with the latest news from across the Santa Clarita Valley. Firefighters work to stop this chain fire from spreading any further. With Super Tuesday right around the corner, a new generation of voters are getting ready to head to the polling booth for the first time. Ivan Illigan gives new voters some insight for Election Day. With the upcoming election, students are encouraged to vote and use their voice to make a difference. Such Caspian is one of those students. Everyone has a voice. It's important to speak your voice. It's important to know where this country will be heading. If you decide to go with either political party or still getting your voice out there, and that is very important to do as an American citizen. I highly encourage all the young people to vote as well. For Kenyan News, I'm Ivan Illion. Two months ago, we brought you the story of a hand dryer too dirty to use. School officials said they would fix the problem, but have they? Kenya's news reporter Austin Chase may have an answer. Back in November, I did a story about the hand dryers on campus and how they can pose potential health hazards to those who use them. I brought this to the Vice President of Public Information, Eric Harnish's attention, to which he said, we installed hand dryers uh, for two reasons primarily. One is hygiene um, and, and the other is um, just uh, cost savings in terms of labor. So, uh, you know, when you have dirty wet paper towels scattered around a restroom, uh, it's obviously not uh, particularly sanitary. Second to that, you have to have somebody come in and clean that mess up and that costs money. So, um, on average, we probably save $65,000 a year. After winter break, I decided to go straight to the bathroom to check on the hand dryers and... They were still there. So I asked the VP if I could interview him again to get an update, but unfortunately he wasn't able to meet me in person, but he did send me this response. We have newer model hand dryers on campus ready to be installed. They'll replace the older style models once those reach the end of their useful life and are no longer functional. Due to the current state of some of these hand jars, I think they'll be replaced pretty soon. That's it for Canyons News. I'm Austin Chase. Since the straw ban has been enforced, consumers have been confused about what type of restaurants must abide by the law. Handing out straws in sit-down restaurants has been banned unless consumers request them. Many people are still confused to see straws being readily handed out in places like coffee shops. Assembly Bill 1884 states that full-service restaurants are the only ones who must abide while places that violate the ban can get fined $25 per day. The fine cannot exceed $300 per year. Some say that the fine is enough incentive to follow the ban, while others say that it's not nearly enough to bring violators in line. For most companies, paying a fee of $25 a day is, is probably not going to be that tough. And so if they really still want to provide the plastic straws, they're, they're probably going to. So that's probably not a, a heavy, en heavy enough fee to really get people to ban straws. The new online Disney membership is giving a lot of fans opportunities that will last forever. <laughs> Disney Movie Insiders hosted a dog-friendly call the wild screening. With assistance from the Animal Wellness Foundation, dogs of all shapes and sizes got to enjoy the new film in an outdoor themed theater. While laying on a sleeping bag by the fake fire, guests also got to meet the director, Chris Sanders, and Buck, the stars of the film, sort of. Every dog in the movie has a real world counterpart. If you're interested in these events, go online and join the Disney Movie Insiders. And that's the latest from the Canyon Newsroom. I'm Maya Lockett, join us March 18th for our first live newcast of the semester. <laughs>